It's a privilege to introduce Sumit Gupta from IBM. He's been um, a true partner for us over the last year. And Sumit and I met at a, at a, at a conference, NVIDIA conference, and uh, we struck up uh, an amazing partnership since then. So very excited uh, for, the, for, the, for the FISA chat. I'm uh, glad to be here. And actually, uh, Dean, uh, I lived in um, Irvine for seven years as well. So uh, go Irvine. And the funny thing is, I think on, your, on, on the conversation you guys were having, what we need is a scratch for machine learning. You guys know what scratch is, right? It's this software that kids learn, which is visual way of learning programming. We need a scratch for machine learning to get the kids into it. Right? We are working on it. Yeah, good. Looking forward to that. So uh, you've been a very checkered and strong career, uh, having built the CUDA community, and then one of one of the community users sent an email saying, "Well, it seems like Tiano works better on GPUs, and and you're scouring the the mailing list to see that killer app for GPUs, and lo and behold, we have a whole movement on our hands." Yeah, I think the context here is uh, what Sri is referring to. Is I used to be at Nvidia for for eight years, and I used to be the general manager for the data center and AI business there, and. Uh, in about 2012, we, uh, we started uh, discovering that people were using GPUs for deep learning. In about November, I think, um, Google bought DNN Research, which was Jeff Hinton's company. Um, and I think, you know, we, we'd been trying to figure out, frankly, how to make, uh, bring value to the data analytics world at that time. That's what it used to be called, data analytics. And uh, we, you know, we knew we had a very high performance processor. And then deep learning came around, and when we saw what it was capable of doing, right, we were blown away. And, and we knew we were onto something. Now, you know, I moved to IBM about a little less than four years ago, and I've carried that journey with me, which is I, I'm, uh, you know, the most passionate person, I believe, around deep learning at IBM. Um, and that's really where our partnership started, right? Our partnership started around not just deep learning, but in general, the promise of machine learning and deep learning. On new architectures. On, on new architectures, on accelerated architectures, but most importantly, how do we take these technologies that are in our phone through consumer applications and bring them to the enterprise? That's the real journey, right? Because the enterprise is what at least we service, and I think you guys are also very focused on. And that's really the, the journey we're on. So tell us about uh, how uh, Power and GPUs, the the, the latest architecture and how it's been adopted. It's, you, you guys had a phenomenal year. Yep. Uh, congratulations on Thank that. You. And we're obviously basking in the glory and bringing some of our own uh, applications on top of this platform. But tell me how, how it is from the IBM side. Sure. So um, I, I think about five, seven years ago, uh, IBM makes power CPUs. And, and most people don't realize this, but power CPUs are actually faster than Intel CPUs for most applications, right? It's a CPU that was designed for databases, data analytics, so uh, you know, a large portion of Oracle databases run on power CPUs. Uh, several years ago, I, I wanna say about seven, eight years ago, IBM realized that Moore's Law was dead. And we believed, and you know, as a CPU manufacturer, we, we admitted it, it's dead. And you're, you gotta remember, IBM used to own its own fab till about seven or eight years ago. Um, so I think, that realization brought us to the conclusion very quickly that the future is about accelerators. The only way we're gonna keep up with the performance required for data analytics, for machine learning, for high performance computing is to use accelerators. And we partnered with NVIDIA, we partnered with Xilinx, we partnered with Mellanox, we created an open power foundation. And the key to that partnership was realizing that the CPU has all the data the system memory is connected to the CPU, and the accelerator is hanging off this really thin straw called PCIe. So how do you move that data, you know, half a terabyte of data to that GPU accelerator or FPG accelerator? And that's where the partnership came with NVIDIA and Xilinx, right? We, we created with them, we co-created with NVIDIA a, a high-speed interface called NVLink that allows the GPU and CPU to communicate to each other much faster. And that dramatically improves the performance of machine learning algorithms, of deep learning algorithms. The minute you want to go to the GPU, 
we can provide that data to the GPU much faster through this high-speed interface. And, and the benchmarks show you the results there. Yeah, H2 for GPU is one of the um, biggest winners in this, because especially the data load speeds. Exactly. And how, um, I mean, we've seen customers pick up uh, this architecture worldwide. Uh, one of our common customers, for example, Vision Banco, they'll be, um, Diaz will be speaking later today. Uh, are you seeing this adopted worldwide and what, what are the big trends there? Are you uh, trying to improve, speed it up as yep. next generation? So if you, if you look at uh, what's happening, let's take banking because you talked about Vision Banco. If you do look at the banking community, right, um, uh, a lot of their production workloads are today on rule-based systems. And, and I'm not trying to offend any of our banking clients here, right? But let's say everything, a lot of our production stuff is on rule-based. Take anti-money laundering, for example. Rule-based means if I see this behavior and this behavior and this behavior, it's probably fraud or it's probably a money laundering. The problem with that approach is, um, I was talking to one of our large clients, they get 25,000 alerts a month on anti-money laundering. 99% of them are false positives. But guess what? They have to actually put a team of human people who go and investigate every one of those 25,000 alerts. Because if it is a, a, really a money laundering situation, it's a serious thing. Um, now, how can we use machine learning and deep learning, which is what the bank is trying to figure out, to first augment this rule engine. And all you'll do is score the alerts with these 100 are most likely to be truly anti-money laundering, uh, truly money laundering, and so that you can go investigate those first. So that's the first way they're gonna bring it in. And then eventually the idea is, you know, once they have a proven system, be able to uh, improve it. Now, all of these things, you know, you can either look at it as more accuracy, so you catch more instances, because machine learning learns from experience. Rule-based depends on someone saying, ah, we saw a situation, let me add a new rule, versus machine learning figures that out on its own. And that's the beauty of machine learning, is learning from experience rather than being programmed to do something. Yeah, the suspicious activity reports, the SARS, and reduction of the false positives there. It's a very common theme for us across several banks. Yep. Um, what the, the interesting nuance with the AML specifically is that the, 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 the same pattern, once the bank stops that, the, the culprits are, just, the, are going to the next bank and exploit them. So it's almost like a chain reaction unless you try to vaccinate all the banks at the same time, you're constantly chasing the trend. Yeah, in fact, un unlike, let's say, the uh, cybersecurity world where the community actually shares uh, security breaches and so that everyone can patch their system, the banking world does not share their, you know, if the one bank finds a new uh, fraud uh, approach or a new uh, money laundering approach, they don't necessarily share. It's not a very uh, open community. I think, I think open source, um, as well as obviously common patterns and platforms, can help there. Um, what are um, what are things coming up uh, next week? You have a phenomenal conference in the area. I even think yep. um, we're our team is present. We'll be talking together to a lot of customers and IBMers. And uh, any 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 anything that H two O community can um, follow up the conferences in San Francisco. Absolutely. So so our largest conference for IBM is next week here in Moscone Center uh, starting, I think, Monday. And uh, you know, there's a lot of sessions there for makers, for developers, uh, where we'll talk about how we're working with H2O, how we're taking other open source technologies, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, whatever you use. And our objective is to take open source and enhance it to improve productivity, very much like driverless AI does. I mean, driverless AI is all about improving productivity of the data scientists. In the same manner, we do a lot of things to improve productivity, let's say around TensorFlow. Uh, we have an auto hyperparameter tuner. We have a distributed uh, learning approach. Um, so you know, you can please do attend some of the sessions there. You'll hear from our clients. Uh, I have a guest from Morgan Stanley who's gonna talk about, in fact, the 
money laundering situation uh, uh, case. Yes. Uh, but we have a lot of clients talking about what they're doing with machine learning. We have a lot of sessions around how you can use machine learning, so a lot of sort of developer-centric sessions. And then, of course, we, you know, as with any big conference, there'll be some nice, interesting announcements we'll make next week. Fantastic. It is uh, approaching lunch hour, so about time to ask the important question. What's for lunch? What, what is the, <laughs> no, what is, the, um, what is the best place for biryani in the Bay Area? Well, it's, so, see, that was a planted question because more than once, Shri and I have run into each other at our favorite biryani place in, in the South Bay, me with my family, Shri with his family. And, uh, you know, let's go have a competition, but our favorite is kebabs and curries down in Santa Clara. Yeah. We'll crowdsource that answer. <laughs> All right. What a pleasure. Thank Thanks you. Thank having. you for having me.